in an afflicted planet, whether in the radix or uh, in the predicative chart, the lower pole can be attributed to the past and the upper pole to the future. The afflicted planet will always be turned to the past. The afflicted planet will often have the following effect. Because of past situations, because of the fact that I did not do something in the past, that is, I have not realized the upper pole of the planet, we have a problem. This logic applies to the interpretation of the natal chart too. The afflicted Venus will worry about not being able to earn more money, about losing the money it possesses. Her vector is turned to the past, to the preservation of what exists, and not to the attraction of the new. Something from the past remains unfinished and comes to the surface when this transiting afflicted planet forms aspects. The affliction does not correspond to the lower essences, but to the presence of numerous dissonant aspects. Or if the planet is at the top, which is the focus of a tense configuration, even if it forms harmonious aspects, it still remains afflicted, having the enumerated criteria. Conjunctions with slow planets give a lot of strange tension if the slow planet in question hasn't been worked on. So that's a sign of an affliction too. The conjunction with Lilith is another criterion of affliction. The native does not understand, does not feel the function of the planet. Conjunction with the north node weakens the planet. Its effect is similar to the conjunction of Lilith. The person does not feel the planet. Conjunction with the south node makes the planet very strong. If the conjunction with the south node is afflicted, it means that the planet is strong and afflicted and it will have a negative impact in predictions. If the planet is strong and harmonious, then it will not bring a particular harm. The natal house receiving the transiting planet is always the main arena of action. What is happening and where? What qualities is the world asking us to employ and develop? Jupiter passes through the fourth and creates situations of the fourth. This house becomes active during this period when Jupiter, being in the fourth, forms an aspect to Venus in the second. The house that receives the transit, Venus in the second, corresponds to the domain of life that is impacted by the transit. Venus, in its turn, governs something, a certain natal house, the eighth, for example. So the transit affects house 2, which opens or closes opportunities in house 8. We must add house 4 to house 2. The events occur in the 4th because of the 6th. Due to my health condition, to my work, I am taking a forced vacation and it will affect my money. What is the difference between a harmonious planet and an afflicted planet in a house in the predictions? If Jupiter is afflicted in the natal 6, the causes of the impact of its transits will be serious breakdowns, renovation and health complications. These problems require a fairly large investment of effort on our side. Another property of an afflicted planet is that it creates stressful events at the wrong time. I got sick at the wrong moment when actually I have to do an important presentation, when I have to go on a trip, this will be, of course, the cause of tension. If Jupiter is not afflicted in the radix, then the sixth, its natal house, will not be so harmful, even if it creates problems. There will be a situation like I get sick or I have to start renovation at home, yet Jupiter will not completely spoil the situation. Other houses and processes not totally. It will offer additional opportunities in the sphere of the house. House 5. Children, my business, buying, selling, entertainment, my participation, holidays, their celebration. Also the payment of current bills, the latter does not correspond to the subject of house 2. The axis of houses 2-8 is the axis of acquisition or earning of money and of its preservation. Payments of bills correspond exactly to the fifth, as if we were symbolically offering something to someone. A problematic situation would be, for example, that the payment does not go through, keeping in mind that the fifth does not draw our attention to the quantity of money, to whether we have it or not, but 
to the process of payment as such. In predictions, house five is also my participation. For example, I give money for a group birthday gift for a colleague, and my participation is limited to that. The situation requires my involvement. But what is the difference between participation according to house one and the one according to house five? If house one as the alchemical process of calcination requires the direct expenditure of our own energy, requires that I do something concrete, then house five is simply my contribution to something big. This can be any form of contribution without active action. What matters for the fifth is the contribution and not the result. House 12. Because of multiple problematic things, because of deception, cheating, lack of information, uh, credulity, my charity, my help, my kind heart, my tolerance, um, illusions, etc., I leave situations in the house of the transit. Be careful not to deviate into psychology. We talk about situations of immigration, global relocation, diseases, wild nature, hunting, mystical situations, subconscious. Because of the events described by House 12, I experience changes in the house of the planet, in transit. The 12th is the most important house. It rules all other houses in the birth chart, and its transits are totally important. The interaction with one's self begins here. This house absorbs all other houses because it is the house of the subconscious. Phase one of the cycle, the conjunction root. Episode. Any trend is set or begins its existence during the conjunction. The conjunction of the transiting planet uh, with the natal planet marks the emergence of a new experience. The natal planet experienced it for the first time and felt it. At the stage of the root episode, a new scenario of the work of the planet is set up and it exists for the period of the planet cycle. The conjunction gives birth to a new cycle of the planet. The conjunction corresponds to the root episode. A root episode usually takes us back to childhood, when a trauma occurred and developed into a root episode. A root episode may not obligatory come from childhood. It can emerge at any time throughout our life. Such root episodes will not be as strong as those from childhood, but they will still play important roles in our lives. We can say that root episode from childhood constitutes a central root. The following root episodes that emerge later are complementary. Why is the conjunction so important? It shows how the energy will come to us. Naturally, in the conjunction, energy arrives according to the two poles of the transforming planet, to the upper and the lower poles at the same time. We have to play both poles in order to feel them. The root episodes are always set during conjunctions and we can and must remember what happened during the conjunction. The active phase of the conjunction of Pluto lasts for 2.5 years. It is hyper important if it concerns the luminaries and will divide your life into before and after as if you had two different lives. When a trans-Saturnian planet passes through the Moon, Sun, Venus or other personal planets, life will always be marked by very expressive, pronounced, remarkable periods. Most often these are very difficult periods of life. They can bring success, but the person perceives them as difficult critical intervals. The time can be difficult but productive or complex and negative if the slow planet is afflicted in the radix. These time intervals are of major importance. They determine in principle the rest of your life in the domain of the planet which received the conjunction with a slow planet. If you set a negative trend during the conjunction, then later after the aspect you will be brought to resort to therapy that maybe will allow you to transform this negative trend. To find advantages even in this negative that you set during the conjunction. The transits of Pluto are painful in the same way as those of Neptune and Uranus. The latter is the planet of a cold depression. It devastates and resets everything. And all things lose their meaning. Neptune 
when setting new trends destabilizes, when you do not feel the ground under your feet. Neptune conjuncts the moon. Everything in the person's life becomes unstable, wavering. At first glance, everything is not so terrible, but at the same time, everything is not going well either, as if you were sitting on a powder keg. If Uranus starts creating emptiness, this means that we must empty ourselves and not try to compensate for the emptiness. Uranus conjunction moon. The person needs to get away from the profession, from everything, really. As a reward, she will be given access to a source of new ideas. Uranus conjuncts the sun. Empty your goals, remove your I want, objectives, desires. The task of the uh, aspects of Uranus is to demonstrate to you that everything in this world is just a void and that everything in this world, all cycles, will be reset sooner or later. That nothing lasts forever. Everything is emptiness until we find our true essence. This aspect offers us the opportunity to create and design something new. During the period of the Neptune-Moon conjunction, you should not ask yourself these kinds of questions. Simply start, take the first step, immerse yourself in the process, don't make logical connections, don't analyze. You will give them the response later if this profession should be yours or not. The same thing will be said about the Neptune-Sun conjunction. You should not set any supreme goal. Just start with small things, with simple things, with small conscious things of life. During its conjunctions, each slow planet teaches us that its lower poles do not exist. Uranus says that there is nothing eternal, the sun. Neptune affirms that there is nothing logical, lasting, Mercury. Pluto reveals that there is nothing stable and comfortable, Venus and the Moon. Uranus has conjoined Mars. During this period, all my experience that I received according to the function of Mars will start to reset. Everything that I did before can still function, but it no longer gives me satisfaction and even starts taking more energy from me. Uranus says, empty your Mars, step back, don't do anything, contemplate, Give yourself time to contemplate. Neptune, conjunction Mars. Learn to use intuition during any activity. Learn to act more gently. Go beyond frameworks and rules. Activate your most creative thinking. Pluto, conjunction Mars. Go beyond the limits of energy. This is what all the speakers, trainers, life coaches, and positive psychologists talk about that you are capable of achieving much more than you think, that you are much more than a being human. All this is true, but these qualities manifest themselves during conjunctions of the transgenerational planets with the personal planets. Their conjunctions lead us there in a very specific way. To be able to achieve this kind and this level of result, one must have had a marginal experience. From the point of view of psychology, when we turn to someone else's experience, we can obtain permission from the universe. For example, we used to think that we couldn't charge our clients for our services in euros because we live in the US and no one would pay in euros supposedly. Suddenly we meet trainers, coaches, who charge their services in euros and we get permission to do the same by copying them. Very often, the trine gives the following effect. Was it really possible to do things this way? I would have never imagined it. The person receives insights and intuitive revelations regarding the subject. It is necessary to integrate the transiting planet into the natal planet receiving the trine. But before doing that, it is essential to observe how others do it. You will need a series of actions, a period of a series of integration. The trine can create a problem when if we try to do something by ourselves, we will never be able to find the right solution. We want to increase sales, but don't understand how to get there. We use our own experience. It gives certain results, but not the desirable results. We want to increase sales by 50%, but they only increase by 30%. Another property of the trine, both in predictions and in natal astrology, is that 
it often gives the effect of a glass ceiling. The person invests all her energy and tries to reinvent the wheel instead of using the one that someone has already invented. She gets agitated, acts excessively, and hits the glass ceiling without understanding what is happening. She notices that she obtains certain results, but she doesn't manage to reinforce them, go further beyond these results to double them. 